Oh, this is driving me insane. Uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah. I was like the clearest person on this call. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um. Alan, the headphone killer. There's the that, there's your cold intro. There it is. <laughs> what a volume warning. <laughs> Guys, I didn't think that would happen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Conquistables. Tonight, the Conquistables are tuning up the band as they discuss the best wrestling music of all time. Posing on the front of the album tonight, from the Ministry of Darkness, Cameron Phillips, the Second City Saint, Ewan Taylor, the Hitman, Bill Doyle, and Jordy Allen Milburn. Only tonight on The Conquistables. Or it's all going to be a train wreck. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Hey. The <laughs> listeners will know. Listen to this. Well, they, they will know if it's been a train wreck or if Discord does work for recording. Well, <laughs> you see, the listeners are going to be able to hear it. If they don't hear it, they know the answer. Exactly. <laughs> or if they hear, or if they hear a different version of me saying in the future we we're re-recording it through Skype because it all failed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're picking another night to record this because it's yeah. Yeah. rubbish because it came out <laughs> very bad. But anyway, given Alan has half an hour, I guess we should probably get going. Yeah, we'll probably get going then. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of fell off the cliff, but there, yay! Hey! I'm hey, been... hey. figuring we've been through the bit where Phil does the, you know, welcome the conquista boards, blah, 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 bit. Yeah, we've done that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Close, yeah we've done that. Recorded in his cupboard full of coats at the bottom of the stairs. Or <laughs> How do you know that? Because I when when you don't, when you're not in the house, I live there. Oh my gosh. Um, All yeah, right. Um, imagine, imagine the plane journey down every night. Oh, Jesus, Phil's got out again. Oh, God. Yeah. I've got to play again. Get the Conquista copter. I thought we were going to say something different there. <laughs> anyway, um, it's another round table, ladies and gents. Yes, indeed. The Conquista copter. <laughs> yeah, like a big, wow. like, massive. That's a, that's a good one to land, isn't it? Jesus. Uh, I, I got it. That was a cracking one, that one. It's just, it's just the giant deck, you know. Um... <laughs> We've done. Um, what else have we done? done Intercontinental title matches, yep, we've done we've, one, which was the best, the best one was my one. We've done tag teams, which the best one was the one we suggested. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I think I know exactly who the the best tag team was. We don't talk about tag teams. That's that's no. completely not not a but, thing we discuss. Yeah, we know who the best tag team. They are the greatest tag team. <laughs> we know who they are. We just don't talk about it. It was, oh, it, okay. was it was deserving though. <laughs> <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that at another time. Because <laughs> it's obviously, it lends itself to a, an audio format. We thought we'd do best wrestling theme songs. Yes. And we're going through the ages. We're going from the 80s all the way through to now. <laughs> <laughs> Bit too hard. We're going we kind of split up in a sort of rough decade, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Yep. 80s, 90s. Shall we just is. jump into the 80s then? It's yeah, a bit tricky to do the best wrestling song of the 70s because, you know, they... they they didn't have any? Well, well, I'm just going to elaborate with a little story, if I'm be so. Ah, oh, yes. Now, Sorry to tell. I don't know if this is true or not. I haven't had time to fact check it, so I'm going to take the man's word as gospel. Um, and I think it was touched upon in that latest magazine that Cameron let, kind of let me with a big crossword. What, of Inside the Ropes? That's there the one, that's the one. There you go. I knew we'd come in eventually yeah. for it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they do an interview with Sergeant Slaughter and he touches upon it there, but an interview I heard with Slaughter years and years ago, um, he, he claimed when they redebuted him as this American hero type gimmick that he wanted to use the Marine Corps music. Oh. But Vince McMahon, um, Vince McMahon Sr. thought it was a silly idea, but nonetheless he persevered with it and he he came down the aisle with the uh, Marine Corps music and apparently got a good ovation. He claims in that interview 
he was the first wrestler to come down the aisle to music. Considering the Sergeant Slaughter never it was in the Marine Corps, so you know I don't think I'd believe him anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, there is that. Sadly, that's I do love Slaughter, but that is sadly does hold yeah. over him, doesn't it? When there was um ah, uh, because like you always talk about uh your your Freebirds are the ones that kind of popularized it. You know, they kind of in the mid in the early to mid eighties. So, Will that have been around the same time? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm fairly sure when he when he, when he's brought back. Well, actually, that's his claim. I've not verified it in any way, but that that was the story he told on this interview that I've yeah. read years ago. Yeah. So it's all thanks to Sergeant Slaughter. Well, that's what he pretty much was saying. That's what he was pretty much hinting at during this interview. Enough. I think. So. Right thanks, thanks, Sarge. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Do you think he just marched in the office and said, "I want to have music," and that's an order? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> He's walking like, I want some music, you maggots. And then they went, well, we've got this, like, just just repetitive drum roll. And he was like, no, <laughs> God, I yeah. don't want that as a music, no. <laughs> Wait till I'm a heel. We'll do it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, I wrote down, I, when I was kind of going through this, I was kind of thinking, like, I, I want to kind of do, like, what, what makes a good theme? You know, what makes a good wrestling theme? And I wrote down a few kind of bullet points why I think makes a good wrestling theme. Okay. It's got to so, have a good opening intro, hasn't it? It's got to have a good yeah. few starting bars. Yeah, because you have to go to the beginning. Something. It's got to fit the character, and it yes. has to be like memorable separate from the wrestler. So it can't just yes. be something that kind of works within the arena. It's got to be like, you know, something you can listen to by itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. as far as I've got. So there's kind of three points. Big noise. It's got to fit the character it's kind of with, and it's got to be memorable as a song by itself. Okay. And I was kind of trying to apply that to stuff. Because like... um. I was trying to like the music is really kind of a big thing and kind of get wrestlers over because everybody loves Cesaro and he but he's kind of the thing about him is like he's never really got over to the kind of level he has done. And I put like he's never had a memorable theme tune. No. He's he's stole Dean Malenko's theme, so <laughs> see I can't even remember it. I can't even remember it. For like that kind of big wrestler, like their music is kind of almost inseparable from them as a character. Like it's like becomes one of the same thing. And you shouldn't so, change it too often either. I think some wrestlers change too often, and that hurts it. Like they've they tried to change Austin's theme a couple of times, but it didn't work. It was the original's always the best in that scenario. Is it when yeah. they tried to go through? They went through this sort of massive new metal phase. Didn't yeah, that's they? the reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were disturbed yeah. doing Stone Cold's theme <laughs> tune, didn't they? Yes. yes. Which just seemed to be the same thing, but just having Derek Draymond going, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> the one. That's, that's the one. That's the one. Although, and, although, crap fact about uh, Stone Cold's theme song, what song was uh, Jim Johnson trying to rip off when he, he wrote um, Austin's theme song? The glass breaking oh, one, yeah. Yeah. There's a song that he was trying to rip off, and when you hear the two side by side, you're like, oh, God, yeah. Is it something like Man Terror by any chance? Nope. Uh, Music's not my forte, Cam. Would I heard of this song? You would have heard of the band, but maybe not the song. Oh, dear. Well, that's me out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Go know. Cam, who is it? It's um, Bulls on Parade by Raging Against the Machine. Mm. You hear the open, if you hear Tom Morello's opening riff on Bulls on Parade, yeah. I'm sure you know it's when you hear them side by side, you're like, I'm shocked they didn't even sue. <laughs> well, to be honest, probably, it was probably not even worth it, you know. I think oh, that's no. where something that might come up is like, you know, that kind of uh, thin line between um, per pastiche and just outright stealing. <laughs> yes. Yep. I've well, heard it a few times. Let's rewind it again. Let's go back to the beginning where we were. We've kind of jumped to the 90s. We'll just take it back to the 80s. Yeah. Let's take so it we, know, we know what a good song is, so let's yeah. kind of decide what some good songs are. So we're going to start with the 80s. Okay. Who wants to go first? I'm going like to go Al. first. Because go it's no surprise what I'm going to talk about here. You oh, know I, think, I think I know already, but I'll let you say it anyway. Right. Well... Uh, of course, the the theme song to me, the greatest wrestling theme song, but it pops into the eighties, is of course Real American. Down, 
Uh, you it? I yeah, said yeah. this. I Hold said it. there was no surprise, so I thought I'd just get it out there. But to me, <laughs> to me, it personifies like a wrestling song. It is. It's such a good tune. Uh, although there is dispute whether Rick Derringer actually sung it. Um, oh. <laughs> although he does get credited for it, there is rumours out there. It was. Oh, I did know this stuff. I can't remember. Apologies. There was somebody else involved in the. Um, production of it that really sang the lyrics however if you go to YouTube and you um, Rick Derringer singing it in modern times I must admit it doesn't sound that much like the <laughs> the, the vocalist on the uh, are, on the car are and, you trying to um, say that it's a situation like Jeff Jarrett and the roadie well, possibly yeah it's a storyline <laughs> and I believe Cindy Lauper does some of the backing vocals for it as well alright um, alright so, okay so, so there you go that's, that's, that's my little you see the high pitched kind of like that's the one yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're um, doing these theme songs justice already <laughs> yes so it's welcome to the episode of this that'll get ripped off YouTube completely within about 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> 10 seconds immediately <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so yeah I um it, 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 it obviously it wasn't wrote for Hogan either it's worked for uh, the US Express but they were leaving, so they, they put it in. It was just fit them absolutely perfectly, which is um, something you may not know in um, in edited times. Is on WrestleMania one where Hogan and Mr. T made their entrance. He actually come down to Eye of the Tiger. Yes, because that's what Hogan was using from his Rocky movie really? thing. Really? And yes, it on. Was. Oh wow. <laughs> can mean none other than you know who world wrestling federation champion there he is the incredible hulk hogan with bad man himself mr t the original video if you've got the original um release it actually dubs it out with some generic song wow. it's done yeah. quite well actually and i thought what's this song i also for years that was the actual song they used and then now if you go to the network version, I'm fairly sure Real Americans dubbed over the top of it. I think it's actually <clears throat> it, it, it it the moment. Because yeah, it's it's very rare that Vince uh, Vince P's like an outside song, yeah. isn't it? It's it's yeah. probably like a handful of occasions. We'll probably come to a couple of, as we kind of go through the decades. Uh, but yeah. Well, the- there's there's one I'll probably mention later on in the nineties that I think causes him great damage by having his matches dubbed over. Because <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. I, I often wondered about um, what song did they use at WrestleMania one, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. And then um, eventually, someone's got uh, on YouTube. I found the original footage, like live from when it was taped or whatever, or when it was on. Oh wow! Yeah, Jesse Ooh. Ventura even says, "Oh, I the tiger." That means he comes a Hulk to you know, which I believe that line is edited out of. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. God, I think. Um, it's it's, it's was, weird yeah. to think like how much. Like we kind of rely on the network to provide us for these things, and like how much they can kind of mess around with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean there's like um, this is like the Deadly Boys theme was messed around with like for a long time when they were out of the company. Yeah, not completely. There's all kind of examples of yeah. So there's like and you know they mess with the way they mess around with crowd noises and stuff. It's yeah, it's the whole Star Wars thing, isn't it? It's like you want the original, not the special edition that came yep. out twenty yeah, years special, later. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, but you know, with Hogan's theme, it becomes synonymous with Hogan. Yep. Mm. But not only that, it was like your soundtrack to pretty much every pay-per-view at the time. Like, every pay-per-view would just about close with that music, wouldn't it? You know, yeah, true, uh, yeah. you know they were like, what a, what a event WrestleMania 5 is, and the commentators talking, and Real American would be playing in the background. Literally, <laughs> every every pay-per-view around that time would be played out by, by Real American. Well, like, it's it, uh, it the boxing, the, the, kind of, the, big, the big kind of chord to the beginning, that gets the yeah. crowd up on their feet. It's, you know... F- just fits Hogan like a glove. It's you know, it's a song by itself sort of thing. It is. I hate to hate it to agree with Alan, but you know, it is like a really, really good. It kind of like <laughs> sets the the marker down for like what a wrestling song should be, doesn't it? For the kind of the rock and wrestling era. Yeah, mm. I, I, I mean, um, it, it, the sort of Hogan's it, later experiments with different theme tunes. Well, like, yeah. again, what Cabrid said about before is obviously used Voodoo Child for a bit. But then that's no evidence that that exists on the network, I don't believe. <laughs> I believe it's like something WCW very paid, similar. A, I remember reading that they paid a horrendous amount to the Jimi Hendrix estate to use it. Yes, they did pay a lot of money to it, which probably helped contribute to their downfall. Um, I'm actually listening <laughs> to the book Nitro at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, they were not good with money in the slightest. <laughs> 
yeah. Uh, that does kind of come up in their stories that apparently like money issues are like a little bit tricky for them. It's weird that, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, and despite them changing the theme um, briefly for Hogan, Real American was the one the fans all remember him for, and that's what he comes out to this day when he's when yep. he comes out because that's that you know that's the song the fans. Yeah. yeah. The two the two the, the two things are one like Hogan and that music are just kind of like inseparable, aren't they? Yep. Yep. Um, and WCW made a, a rip-off version of it when he debuted, which you've probably heard. American made. Yeah. American made. I think that's pretty good. A pretty good um, homage to it. Let's just call it. I do think that's quite a good theme as well, but obviously not as iconic as he's uh, real American. Yeah, mm. WCW were very good at when they got the ex WWF talent. They were very good at creating homages to the WWF songs, yeah. so they were still recognisable to the fans. But it was different enough, so they didn't end up getting sued. <laughs> well, I think I think that rounds up my little talk on Real American. But I would say to me, that's the most iconic, possibly in wrestling, but certainly in the eighties for me. But yeah. um, we'll do some honourable mentions afterwards. But one of you guys yeah. shoot next. <laughs> uh, I'll go then. So for me, I think when I say this one, I think people are going to agree. It's pomp and circumstance for yep. Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh. That's yep. a good one as well. Very this, good one. You, you just hear the song opening, da, 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 and you just know greatness is going to come out and then Macho Man comes out with his hat his tassels sensational sherry depending on the time period you're watching and to me like Real American the 80s for wrestling is pomp and circumstance and Macho Man coming out because I don't think there's very few instances where music really just matches the personality of the person it's representing in Macho Man's case it was even when he was the Macho King it was even better because it just yeah fit even well didn't it yeah yeah because Basically, Macho Man went from a supremely confident person to an asshole with an attitude. <laughs> but he'd it, come out on like the big throne as well. Depends, yeah, the throne, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and just that blaring over. So that's a good example of music. You didn't need to change when you turned a face heel or vice versa because the music works either way. One thing I will um, say as well, and it goes back to Real American, is you originally had different beginnings, <laughs> like. Um, Real American had this very slow instrumental start. You might have heard it for like 30 yeah. seconds before it. And and I'm fairly sure with uh, the um, Hope and Glory that they used like the extended version. You know, it's got this like, if everyone saw the, listen to the classic piece, it's got this build up before <laughs> it gets to the, 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 the part. And they used that. And I don't think that works. I'm glad they cut it and just went into the. Yeah, the, they just the, the, yeah. The, the, cut straight into it. And I think. Yes, yeah, it's that kind of. The, I'm not sure if jarring is the right word, but it's, it's that, that kind of like it, the way it kind of bursts onto the. the like cuts across everything, doesn't it? That yeah. kind of big intro music. And it sort of fits the bell with because, you know, but the first like couple of bars, the crowd are going well because they know who's coming out. And then yeah. he comes out, he, he does his thing. And to me, it just it, if you were to ask me what one song represents the 80s in wrestling I think that's definitely going to be up there yeah. well, well Savage never changed his theme song for his whole nope. WF run He's and I'm not. fairly sure in WCW he had a, a really weird version that used to go or oh, yeah, I think as we've discussed the Conquista Boys before he had a kind of like pumping farting version of it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was like it was like is that what it was called yeah, that was the one <laughs> But like for me, if you're talking about the eighties, okay. like you, you gotta have some synthesizers in there. And that's why I kind of get I kind of get drawn towards uh, the kind of twin kind of uh, mm. music of uh, yeah, Jake the I- Snake and Brett the Hitman Heart. Oh the heart the heart foundation in the eighties though. Yeah, this is the '80s one. I'm good. This is like you know, everybody has kind of rest on the hill to die on, um, and different topics they want. You know, they say they'll, they'll, they'll die on, but for me, <laughs> Jim Johnston murdered that theme tune. Yeah. 
when Hitman came back and Jim Donson got hold of it, because I think I'm pretty yes. sure the original one was done by um, the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, like the Jake the Snake one was. And, you know, Jim Johnson's great. He's done some amazing things, but he absolutely murdered that Hitman theme by put, like, just chucking guitars all over it. It was just sounded horrific. Do you mean that he's the one he got in 94, the one he got in, like, 2014? Yeah, um, 94. Well, well, was it when he kind of came back from a knee injury or something? He kind of he was away for a bit and then kind of came back and he had to do no, his music. King of the Ring 94, I think, is when he first used it, but the one with, like, the big screechy intro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because then they did just, another... Th- they did another theme for him in 20... Was it 2012? I can't remember when he came back. And that was pretty awful as well. Why, why give him new music? His old music's yeah. iconic. Why do we need to exactly. give him new music? That old one was brilliant with the synth going and stuff. And like, <laughs> you know, you know, exactly. You've got the kind of rocky Hitman synth and then you've got the kind of... The, the Jake the Snake one is that kind of a bit slower, a bit moodier... And that again fits in with his character, that kind of like. Um, the, um, I don't know if it fit him quite as a heel, it wasn't quite heel music. Well, it changed um, his music, didn't it? They had, you had the trusty theme for the heel. Yeah. So, really kind of, yeah. For that original one, I'm thinking about it, if I'm talking since and the 80s, I, you can't, I thought you can't ignore Macho, uh, the Million Dollar Man. Well, well, um, I think I think we'll have to do that in the 90s because he didn't actually have it in the 80s. What, the original, the uh, Million yep, Dollar Man yep. music? D- didn't have really? any music. He just came down to no music at all. You go on the network. Yeah, really? That's zero oh, music. Yeah. <laughs> not even that. Not yep. even, okay. And um, my kind of uh, wild card entrance to the 80s would be the music <laughs> for the Doctor of Style, Slick. I do like that one. I've, I've got a little... Because um, you open up a few events with that music and I just think it's such a good uh, music to open up a, a pay-per-view with. I, I don't know why, but I do. I think it's a good piece of music. It is. I don't remember Slick's music. You know, they're like... Oh, yeah, 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 right. The Jive Soul Man. The Jive Soul Man. You remember Akeem Dancer? I remember that. So Akeem cool. dancing. Some people like walk around their work yeah. dancing like Akeem. Who would do that, Cameron? That is just terrible. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Who would do that? I mean, there's issues around Slick. Like, I think the music video for the song has him eating fried chicken. <laughs> so there's, yeah, wow. it's not, it's not good. But the actual music itself is cracking. I don't know who, I don't know if that was uh, another again a, a, a Jimmy Hart one or if that was a Jimmy. It Johnson might be song. because it was edited. Oh, that was a belt. It was edited out the first release of the. Um, WrestleMania collection when they did it on the box set, and that was edited out. Uh, so when the when the boss yeah. man came down, he would have like um, his da, 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 da theme, and it's like, well, he hasn't got that for another eight years or something. But here he is in 1990 <laughs> yeah, with his, his theme music, you know. So that's me. Like I'm a synth boy. I'm, I'm fully into Jim, uh, John Carpenter and that kind of oh, music. The, the thing is, the thing's got a fantastic stuff, soundtrack. Most John Carpenter um, movies have. His uh, latest album is brilliant, by the way. I thoroughly recommend it on Apple Music or wherever you get your music. Um, so, yeah, so any of the kind of synthy ones. Um, but if I had to pick, if you had to kind of help me down and punch me in the face, like I said, I'd probably be Jake the Snake. Just because that kind of the kind of roll in synth voice is brilliant. I really love it. Just a tidbit about Jake the Snake's music. It was originally used for Saturday Night's Main Event. Really? They used it for that and somebody was just sat there and go, you know what, yeah. that'll make a great theme for somebody. Yeah. And yeah, oh. and, uh, yeah. Yeah, the the, the the actual WrestleMania theme for something because obviously they are, at some point they just began buying in songs for the kind of you know the songs brought to you by whatever generic band's popular at the moment. But you know the very theme of the Conquistadors is um, I can't remember was it WrestleMania Seven's kind of 
Uh, was it like six to seven? I think six, is seven, that kind of thing. Possibly eight as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think. So. Yeah. So that's where you can open the next decade. But I think, you know, the, the actual show music themselves was quite good in places and the intro music for the shows and that sort of thing. You know, separate from the rest, the actual show music was some of those were cracking as well. Have we mentioned, let's see, that this call's been sort of cutting out a little bit for me, so I, I, we might have already mentioned him. But as far as, like, music suiting the character of a wrestler, I don't think in the 80s you got any closer than Rick Rude. Oh, but no one's mentioned that yet, but that's a good choice. Ooh, no. Well, that's well, a shout. I'll, that's where I'm going, then I'm going Rick Rude. I'll tell you that, Cam, but if you you listen, you watch any Rick Rude match on the network, you won't get that no. same music. <laughs> not, the, 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 not that one, but it, it, Yeah, they get some generic, very closely resembling it, but not, not the original. Because yeah. no, it worked, no. I mean, because it's like, it kind of suited his act, because not only was it his entrance music... But he would have his little bit where he was like, you know, slag off the audience yeah. and then remove the robe and then it carried on. In that minute. It just suited both mm. kind of thing. And it is, it, it, you know, you cannot use that music as a face. No. And actually, I don't think it ever was. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, going, hey, I love me. Da, 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 da. Um, so yeah, that's that's my vote. I'm rubber stamping it. He's Rick Rude. All right. Have you heard Rick, wow. Rick Rude's WCW theme? Yes. I must have, but I don't remember it. Oh, I think it's fantastic. It, it's very similar to Shawn Michaels' Sexy Boy theme. Yeah, it is. Um, it's called, he's simply ravishing, and it's a really good theme. Probably my favourite WCW theme, yeah. So that's something to listen to. Oh. It is pretty good. All right, I might have to get something I wanted to kind of touch on because, like, you know, WCW's music, like whenever we kind of done the the, um, uh, the, sh- the shows on the pay per views on the show, like their music is kind of almost to to a man. They have got terrible entry mm-hmm. in- entrance music, but I kind of mentioned it before the record. But I always felt like you know. Jim Johnson kind of like stands across all of the WWE music for like you know thirty years, but there never seemed to be that kind of figure for WCW. Um, they just seemed to just kind of like reach into the kind of free music <laughs> cupboard and just pull out a random song for the wrestlers, and that was kind of about as far as it went. Um, apart from you know Ric Flair's probably one to mention because obviously oh, yeah. his music was as like probably like as iconic of like the Macho Man's. Well, I'm, kind of you know the um... I'm going to be controversial here. Oh, uh, I preferred his WWE theme. You know, he's 1992. And maybe it's because I associate yeah. it with the Rumble, but I always prefer the boom, 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 boom theme. Boom, uh, boom, and boom, I know boom. most people like him for Space Odyssey theme, but for me, no, I much prefer his, uh, his 92 theme. Yeah. But they're like, if you kind of think of like the, the WWE music from the 80s, like, I know we didn't really see, get it much over here in the UK, but like when we've gone when we've gone back to the shows the music's just terrible because there isn't that kind of kind of guiding hand behind it to, to craft the yeah. music to the wrestlers like I say they're just they're just putting out whatever kind of generic music they've got in their cupboard that they do have to pay any kind of license fees for and just chuck it onto the speakers when the guy comes out <laughs> I like, I like oh. the idea of WCW just having a cupboard full of like music <laughs> they just go into like rumbling rumbling rumbling, rumbling around going oh where the fuck is it oh uh, I'll do I guarantee you that's how it works because w- when I was in college we literally had like a big locker full of CDs no, that no, were like, like licensed it treatment. would just be loads of um, old cassette tapes with no boxes no boxes no <laughs> <there>. that's <laughs> true yeah is it rewound is it side A side B or just uh, put it in no, yeah. no, no, no. just put it in yeah, we we t- we literally had like a big catalog, and it was like you know you you want to find you know, TV intro music or like uh, classical music or summer music. Or there's, we did find a port like an adult mu- adult hey. movie section in there as well for that kind of music. <laughs> and you would just you know find the CD, and then that that'd be your music. You know, that's why I, I guarantee, like in the like in the TBS offices, they had some kind of big locker full of stuff. They were like, right, give that to I don't know, uh, Arachnid Man. Arachnid Arachnid Man. Man. Off he goes. Some um, some honourable mentions from the eighties. I'll quickly go through before we move on to nineties. Okay. Is uh, when when you say yeah. synthesizers, you got to love Mister Perfect's music. Yes. Oh, oh of God, course. Yeah. Oh, I've got to do that. Um, and of course, Warriors music was another big one. Mm-hmm. That, that suited the character pretty well. I always felt. 
Yep, it was quick. Um, it was over in about a minute, and uh, that was about it, really. Yeah, the chugging heads down guitar riff. They may as well have not stopped the music for his match. They may as well have stopped the music running for his match. Yeah, just kept it going. <laughs> That makes all WrestleMania sense. 12. He could have been years ahead of his time for like you know playing his music during his match. He could have been he could have been oh. the WCW version of New Jack only with a yeah. So just sort of thinking New Jack had that ECW, <laughs> didn't he? They would play like his songs during the match. Uh, and um, the demolition, of course, uh-oh. Rick Derringer again. Yeah, uh, was another great a great yeah. theme song which I thought fitted the theme very very well. Uh, the Honky Tonk Man theme I think deserves a little mention. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yes, because like I, as I was kind of going through this, I kind of did, was kind of put into like a little subcategory of wrestlers singing their own theme tunes. Ooh, because it's Honky singing his singing his tune, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, on that yeah. one, I think. Obviously, Million Dollar Man does yeah. his lyrics on his on his theme tune. Obviously, like maybe nineties now, as we know, as we now know. Um, and obviously, like you know, we'll go, we'll go through to like Shawn Michaels and even like um, Tyler Breeze had a bit of like that kind of thing as well. So, I I think it works more for heels yes. for definite. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, nice. I always kind of like have a little soft spot when you when you hear the music and they're singing themselves to the ring. I, oh, I quite like yeah, that. You missed the classic one. Don't forget the Mountie. Oh God, yes, oh, of course. All of these aren't so much singing, more just talking. <laughs> well, the Mountie's just <laughs> gloating for the but yeah, part. but it still works because. But the thing is, they they. They think they're singing. Well, yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, makes yeah, it so easy. Yeah. They're like, listen to my awesome singing. Behold my voice. You should be proud to hear this. And then it's just like terrible. So when we move on to the 90s, I think this is an interesting decade because it starts pretty much very similar to the 80s. Yep. But we end up in the Attitude Era. So it's quite a, an interesting decade, this one. It's a wide breadth here, isn't yeah. it? I've loved songs. I don't even know what to pick. There's there's a few, oh, I think. I'll, I'll uh, yeah, I've, I've, got one, I've got one here. Sure, yeah, somebody else kick us off. So I've got one here, and I apologise in advance, In that way I don't apologise in advance. For me, the 1990s is summed up by breaking glass, by a man coming out with a bald head and a black <laughs> jacket. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I won't do what you tell me. To me, that is nineties. Yeah. That that is the it's the Hogan theme, isn't it's it? The it's the Hogan, Hogan theme all over Hogan again. 90s. Uh, for the for the nineties, exactly what I was completely yeah. going to make it. It's real American yeah. for nineties, isn't it? it? Is it fits it, it fits into the with the character, fits in with the zeitgeist, it fits in with yeah. everything. It just like just encapsulates the entire thing, doesn't it? The entire attitude it's just in that one incredible. song. Incredible, and you, you even again it hits the mark of by even the not even the first opening bars. You have the glass shatter. The crowd goes nuclear. Because they know they're about to see Stone Cold yeah, come out and yeah. probably kick somebody's head in. Yeah, I mean, it would. I, I don't know if like Stone Cold's theme tune would work without the glass shatter at the start. No, no, it needs that. Did he ever have it without the glass shatter? No. No, but he had that weird music when he was the ringmaster. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Yeah. Oh, okay. We don't talk about the ringmaster. <laughs> don't talk about the ringmaster. But yeah, I would, um, I would say, yeah, that's the crack. So that, that's that my one. pick for the 90s anyway. Yeah, it's weird because, like I say, you've got like kind of a wide breadth to it. Because, like, again, kind of like um, uh, Shawn Michaels' "Sexy Boy." That was with Sherry yeah. or him singing it. That's uh, that kind of crosses the divide, doesn't it? Because that he's obviously he uses that at the um, oh, was the heel turn ninety two, uh, ninety three, yeah, ninety two, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 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 and he's using that until the end of the decade when he leaves, isn't it? So that's uh, that's an interesting one because that seems to be able to kind of cross across barriers. You know, it's like heel face all well, sorts. Again. So, that's a kind of strong one. I preferred one. the Sherry version. I've got to say, it's the le- it's the mm-hmm. less famous of the two, but I preferred the Sherry version to the to the Shawn Michaels version. Yeah, cause he wasn't with Sherry that long, was he? It was like a year. I think, or two, it, was, uh, I think it was just to uh, establish him as a heel. Then obviously, once it got... wasn't even the year. I don't even think he finished ninety two. Really? Um, yeah, because they were fighting. You know, um, Jeanette hit her with a mirror at the end of ninety two. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's still Sherry's still around at WrestleMania yeah. nine in ninety three, but she's in Tatanka's corner. Oh god, yeah, so she That's is. a weird yeah, combination. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I don't, I have no recollection of that. <laughs> oh god, yeah, I just remembered that. L- Luna's in, Luna's oh, in Shawn Michaels' corner. Oh god. yeah, oh my god, yeah. Jesus Christ! I need to find uh, a video footage of that to just witness it. To tank and Cecil Sherry. <laughs> well, you said you vowed you'd never watch WrestleMania um, Nine, <laughs> I, and I stick to that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like Shawn Michaels, I think is in, is interesting one because it kind of crosses the decades. But if I like the ones I kind of go back to, again, there's, I've got kind of two where I kind of get hung up on. And one's um, Edge and Christians because I think they sneak in, you know, just wait, before wait, the two thousands. Which, which song you're going for? The you think you know me song? You think you know me? You know me. Yeah, 
Yeah, the original one like, with the uh, yeah, kind yeah, of organ drums. And then um, uh, Chris Jericho is music. The Y2J would sneak in. Yeah, uh, break the wall down. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I was going to say it would be in 99 last yeah. couple of months of the 90s, yeah. definitely. So that's uh, yeah, because that's the thing again. It just uh, I think my problem with the Jericho one to pick it like is because the the beginning is quite convoluted. Wow. Like it hasn't got the kind of glass yeah. and straight in. It's got the kind of that and the lights down that kind of thing. But once it starts up, it's uh, yeah again it kind of fits with the begin with really well. Ninety nine because there's that bit where at the start of Jericho starts goes with the countdown. Yes. And then you usually get the pyro and then. You know, break the wall. Do, 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 he always, he always do, had the pyro. He, he debuted this pyro. I remember that. Did he debut with the pyro? I didn't know yeah, they, like they thought he was like, you know, he's just a WCW guy. You know, he's going to be worse. And then, no, like, he, was, he, was, he was. He was a big, big signing because I think they realised what WCW weren't doing with them, so they wanted to push him to the moon. And obviously, night one he came out and confronted the Rock on Raw, so that's that's kind of a big deal at the beginning. So yeah, yeah but then he made a few debuts against Road Dog. Well. Yeah, but you know, I'm not, you I'm not a crying <laughs> road dog, but <laughs> he's not. <a> rock. <laughs> but it sounds like you are, well, Cameron. Sounds like you we'll are. Get there, there, I'm afraid. Because I don't, I don't think the New Age Outlaws had a brilliant theme song. It's just that road dog bit at the start, isn't it? Yes. Which leads into the bit in the ring with mm. every yeah. single time. Yeah. You know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of the ladies, D Generation X, proudly bringing the youth. Yeah, that one, blah. blah, blah. But just that, do, 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 yeah. do, that's it, and him talking, that sort of works uh, really well. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the, as the, as the intro, yeah. as like the intro noise, the dun, 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 that actually sting at the kind start, of, yeah. Again, that's when they kind of got the crowd on the feet straight away. But after yeah. that, it kind of dropped yeah, it Yeah, because you're trying to struggle to remember it without Road Dog doing the, you know, you, you know, you're asking, like, oh, somebody, you know, which, which gives it a bit of a novelty factor, I suppose. But. I wouldn't play the ones he used to do with, um, like K Quick or um R Truth. <laughs> and that was like get rowdy. Oh, do, 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 yeah. get rowdy. Or, or who remembers the Three Life crew from TNA? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that was Is that the one where they were, they were no. the, like the Voodoo Kin Mafia yes. because it was PKM. That's that whole cringe period of TNA. Got fired from the WDF when they do the crap and they all let's yeah, challenge Triple uh, H and Shawn Michaels to a fight. <laughs> And it's just like, right, okay, fair enough, whatever. <laughs> I just realised, I kind of said, like in last bit, I quite like Wrestler singing himself to the ring, but this is kind of reminding me of Men on the Mission. Oh, oh God. God. Well, Oscar, Oscar, no, I think we need to put this in a different category later on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, yeah, because there was, I think, you know, as good as the decade got with the music, there were some, there were some low points, wasn't there, on the way to get there? there quite Definitely. a few, yes. It was about 1995, where there was a hell of a lot of low points in that. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. point where I think the entire industry flatlined. <laughs> <laughs> well, WWF did a good job of it, and WCW were just, just trying to, like, carry on that trend, well, I think, as well. <laughs> WCW in 95 probably became, like, the Hogan show before Hogan became interesting again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's with the um ah oh, what are they called the the Dungeon of Doom whatever they were called yeah the Dungeon Jeez. of Doom you know getting rid of Hulk oh, and Kevin there. Sullivan going yeah, Sullivan my son oh lord that, that, was, stuff. Was, that was amazing you know, this does this doesn't seem like the where are my little Hulkamaniacs that whole segment where he's in the cave it's just oh my god that was the greatest thing ever put the film <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely something. How Hogan What's didn't win the Oscar that year, I'll never know. It was great, never yeah. Know. It's amazing. I mean, you know, he, he, you know, he should have won it for Suburban Commando, but then along comes this tower in the Oh, God, Suburban <laughs> Commando. Who's, who, who's left to pick the night you see him? That'd be Cameron. Phil knows what's coming. Oh, no. I do know what's coming. Because Phil... He's already, he's already uh, revealed his decision. Phil's read this um, this, this running gag in the uh, book um, for the, for the pay-per-view project. <laughs> in that it has to be the Undertaker's ministry theme. Hey! Oh, 
Oh, it's it's really good. It's because yes. <laughs> well, well, you see, the thing is, when I got back into wrestling after like stopping in '96 and got back into it, part of the reason why I got back into it is because I played the PlayStation WWF games. Oh, okay. One of which is Attitude. And I remember picking The Undertaker and then hearing this, you know, and I was like, when the hell did he get that? It was just like, I just didn't, I didn't, I thought I was expecting the bong and then the bell. And it did not happen. And I was like, I'm not sure what this is, but it pleases me. (laughs) Have you heard when he teams up with Big Show? Yes. Uh, The Undertaker's ministry team. The, un- the Unholy yes. Lions theme. Oh, no, that's another good one as well. Think very of that. similar. <laughs> very similar to this one. It's a, it's a good one. The camera's like, no, no, no. no. Don't care about it. No. Memories alone. Just no. Well, I think that when I, when I kind of got back in, one of the first I think one of the first tapes I bought was like an Undertaker tape, and I think like that music was quite heavy, like in like the kind of second half of it when it kind of goes through that that period. I think it ends on that kind of that bit, that big theme. So that was, again was like me one of the things was like oh what's the ending what's this, what's this kind of sad music what's going on here I don't understand I'm confused I, I get after him. my pick works out quite good coincidentally Ooh, um, no. two songs with the same wrestler Ooh. but one at the start of the um, era and one at the end of the era which makes it quite good okay. and I've mentioned him uh, briefly before but it's the big boss man oh <laughs> Okay. And of course, you've got. I believe we've discussed his hard time music before. Oh, yeah, we've yeah, yes. discussed the lyrics. <laughs> and you've obviously got that. And again, that's. I think it's a great fit, isn't it? A great fit for um, for the boss man. With his uh, that bit at the start, where he goes boom. Another bit, I mean. And then. <laughs> yeah. And it then, sounds just like that. I, I think it does as well. Boom. Anyway, and then. <laughs> You fast forward to eight years or so later, and he gets his um, corporation type music. You know, his bump, 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 that music. And I yeah. think that's a really good tune as well. Uh, but I think it's fit the boss man pretty well. And I do think that's a very, very good piece of music um, that, that, that they produced. True. Uh, I suppose we should I, mention, I, um, yeah, your boy Vince McMahon's music, because his theme called, was it uh, the Valentine's Day Masco when it started? The No Chance uh, music? Or was it the Rumble? Rumble. Yeah, yeah. That's you that know, a theme, it was a theme for the rumble. It was. Yeah, but that's kind of hung around for you know two decades since, wasn't it? As like it became his like yeah. kind of theme music. So yeah. it is. It's a good fit as well, actually. I mean, he had loads. This is a pro- I think there's a lot to cover. So I'm going to do a few honourable mentions as quick as I can. We got to mention the rocks music. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with his little again with the voice at the start makes it doesn't it? The, uh, that's what makes the song. Undertaker's had various versions, but from the original graveyard theme to adding some little bits into the ministry music there's been so many Undertaker themes Shawn Michaels another iconic one you didn't think the Bret Hart one was too hot in this era Phil? No no. no. see the Jim Johnson got, got, his, got his dirty paws yeah. on it he ruined it <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't a big fan of Diesel's theme either I like Diesel's original theme which is constant horn noises <laughs> but, uh, but then they changed it and I wasn't too thinking for that one of my favourite themes which didn't stick around too long was Sid Justice's uh, 91 theme. I don't know I if remember, remember that. it. Um, it was on the. Was Super, that called the Psycho Sid music? Yeah, it was on the Super Nintendo. If that helps. Oh, it. just remember a little bit like Psycho Violins kind of going on. You know the ding. No, that's his '97, '90, sorry '95 one. That'll be one that he's uh, dirt, 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 dirt there. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's still, the still a good theme. Um, no one remembers it. It's Mighty's one that's not been mentioned yet. Yeah. Razor Ramon. Oh, 
Oh, yes. oh. Yeah. oh yeah. With the, the, the screech and tire. Yeah, and um, then the kind of just the kind of the, 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 the kind of laconic beat that kind of fit his kind of stroll to the ring. That was a good one. Um, and just I, I I can't name many other examples other than one. This does go back to the eighties. Is wrestlers from countries using country music? Does that make sense? Like the bull, <laughs> yeah. the bull, the yeah. bulldog used their uh, Britannia, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ludwig Borger. Was that the Finnish national anthem? I don't know it off by heart. It must have been. The... It must have been, surely. I mean, you also, you also have the original brothers with all American boys. <laughs> yes, that, that was that was quite good. Uh, I try to think of any. The Mountie used a, a variation before he used the I am the Mountie yeah. thing, but again, I'm not sure if that was any sort of. Oh, oh, Cameron, you're slow on the mark here. Yeah, what are you missing? Thinking. What am I missing? Scotland the Brave. Oh god, yeah, Piper. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, that's another one, obviously. I like how you didn't bug you about go. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> just let it go on. I just let that happen. It was wonderful. Um, I can't think of it. There must be more. I'm sure there's more. If we sat and thought about it, but um... oh yeah, but there's, 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 the nineties was a yeah. good era for music. I think we can say that. The classic one, Legion of Doom, of course. Oh, god, the one of, again, the one yeah. of Rush. Oh yes, perfectly, didn't it? I, I mean... suppose like at the same time, like, we got all these kind of songs on, and then off to one side, there's ECW not giving a single damn about licensing no. songs <laughs> and just playing whatever for anybody, weren't they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. They well, to be honest, they, in that time period, they weren't getting that much of attention. But obviously, as time went on into the two thousands, they kind of got a bit more about that because you yeah. know they were on like pay per view and they didn't want to get like screwed out of existence. Paul Heyman knew from day one that one day Vince McMahon would have to buy the library and edit everything out. So he was just like, <laughs> right, we're just going to lose all this music. <laughs> Cost them as much money as possible, <laughs> make it as awkward as possible, take out all this all this the music. Yeah, yeah, play over the entire match. That's going to really mess with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I think there's some kind of damage done to Sandman's entrances in the ECW on the network by not having Enter Sandman. Yes. Yes. Mm. I mean, it's like um, when we did um, yeah. One Night Stand 2005, we watched the network version, didn't we? And it's like that entrance for Sandman for that tag match with, with Tommy Dreamer is just half the impact it usually would have had by the fact of having some generic chugging rock there. It'll be his WF theme. Or did he even have a WF theme then? I don't know, but yeah. It did, but it was just like, you know, for not having Metallica, it's just because the whole crowd starts singing along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to cause issues mm-hmm. there, isn't it? Yeah, that's going to make it. So you've got this kind of like, you know, do, 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 but everyone, you know, they've tried to reduce the volume, but you can still hear everyone kind of going, enter night. <laughs> As you would do if you were there and, you know, a bit later. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> A bit, yeah. 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 The crowd were a bit Larry, <laughs> weren't they? They were like, yeah. they were very a little bit Larry. I mean, what Rob Van Dam had walk by Pantera for a while. Um, I'm trying to remember who else. Yeah. Did what did Raven have in ECW? Did he not have something that was amazingly copyright breaking as well? <laughs> I uh, Raven had come out and played by the Offspring. So we did. Yeah, that was it. Which seems really not part of his character when you think about it now. Well, not what it evolved into, but at the time it made sense. There is a lot of 90s um, <laughs> themes, and I think we missed them all. There's Kane's, Big Shows, Mankind's, Jesus, it's like a, a list, isn't there? Yeah. So, here you go, Snap Judgment. Is the 90s music better than the 80s music? Well, it's sadly... To a degree, it has to be because things have moved forward. Yeah. You know, production techniques or whatever is is moved forward and stuff. But I think there's a lot of them 80s themes uh, still counted as uh, very much classics. I would say, possibly more. You know, you would say there's more forgotten themes in the 90s than you would in the 80s. Yeah, okay, I'll give you yeah. that. Totally. But we need, we need to make these arbitrary decisions about what, what's better. That's the whole point of the podcast. Well, I, oh god, are we going down this road? So we well. I've, <laughs> <laughs> for me I've got to that's the point of the internet isn't it to make arbitrary decisions about what's best and stick well, to I've it well I've got to no. side with you in on this one and it has to be Austin soon in my opinion 
Yeah. Hang on, before I make me vote, have we all decided Hogan's was the best of the 80s? I would. Good, yeah, I'll stick with if I you. Would, if you I'd would, probably say Hogan's was, yeah. If you inside with me, I'll say yeah. That's fine. <laughs> hey! Because it's one of the things, like, when you think of wrestling from the 80s, you, you invariably think of Hogan's theme. Yeah, yeah. And when you think Lots of wrestling, of wrestling in the nineties, it's the glass break. You know, that's that's the kind of the, it, it just defines that whole period, doesn't it? So moving yeah. on, what yeah. would define two thousands? Ah, look at that segue. <laughs> beautiful, Alan. Oh, beautiful well, it's form. I know. It's almost like he's got something else to do. Uh, I know, right? Well, this is where we kind of entered my, my kind of blind spot because this is like around two thousand, two thousand one is when I dropped out of wrestling and didn't come back for a decade. So, like a lot of this period. I've got really kind of no connection to the music at all. Well, it gets a bit messy, I think, because they're bringing outside artists like um, Rob Zombie, Disturbed, I don't know who else. Everyone's doing the theme, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. You forget the Undertaker had bloody rolling as a theme tune for a while. Oh, God. I don't think about that. For argument's sake, to keep this a little bit simplified, maybe we should just deal with in house. Um, songs rather than external songs. Well, that kind of screws mine up because mine isn't even a WWE theme. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, well, you go with yours, you win them. We'll, we'll work on it from there. So, in the early 2000s, this is where I started discovering independent promotions. So, I started watching a lot of CCW, a lot of Ring of Honor, and there was a small channel that was to thank for that, and that was a small channel called the Wrestling Channel. I which is oh, yeah. sadly departed. Um, that introduced me to a lot of promotions. So they would show IWA Mid South. Christ knows how they got that on TV. Um, CCW. <laughs> they'd show Ring of Honor. They would show Gara. They would show uh, some New Japan occasionally. And throughout watching all that, there was one particular person that stuck with me, and I think it was mainly because of his music. And the person I'm talking about here is CM Punk's music in Ring of Honor, Misery of Cantera by AFI. I've never heard it's this. Interesting. I've never you, heard if, it either, Cameron, so I cannot come. If if you hear it, you would understand. So it starts off quite <laughs> slow, man. It's like, and it kicks into just do 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 do. It's quite almost tribal. Sounds like the Terminator. I just want to say, it sounds like the Terminator. <laughs> 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 no, probably, no, I'm not doing it justice, but with CM Punk's character in Ring of Honor, he was very much on the straight edge train. Um, that was his main sort of thing. He actually had a feud with Raven in the early days because Raven came in and basically was a drug alcoholic piece of shit. And Punk was basically, that's not me, that's not me, that was what my dad was. You know, I'm going to defeat you to, you know, show that Straight Edge is better. You know, Straight Edge is better than you. So for me, growing up from that sort of, you know, it's kind of like, wow, this is like, because I obviously didn't realise there was anything else out there besides WWF because that's all we had. Yeah. Or at least that's all we had access to. But the wrestling channel was a massive gateway to me. And I also need to shout out the UK fan forum as well, the UKFF. I, uh, I'm not sure famous is the right word for it, but um, <laughs> it, it's a thing that's out there in the world. And it, it, that just sort of introduced a lot of different things. So for me, the 2000s is mostly made up of trying to obtain as much wrestling as I could and this was back in the good old days where you would get tapes in the post and uh, these tapes were um, not legal in the slightest. I, I partook in some of that as well. Yes. Tape trading was a wonderful, wonderful, very not legal thing altogether because, well, it was just ripping off copyrighted material, but, you know. Well, I managed to get Royal Rumble 88 and King of the Ring 91. I was so pleased. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, f- for me, this whole era just harkens back to waiting on the post coming and being so excited to get a tape in the post and I think that's kind of lost nowadays because everything's online you know you can go to the yeah. network and put something on straight away whereas back in the day you had to wait even in 2000 you had to maybe wait for a DVD to come in the post or wait for a video to come in the post and then hope <clears> that <throat> if it was a tape that should be watchable 
Yeah, you know, some of the quality wasn't is the it, best. It, it wasn't recorded on, on a potato, for example. <laughs> but wow. for for me, CM Punk's Ryan and Royal theme is just that's something that's just stuck in my head. I um I got I got the Pillman Memorial show when the Pillman Memorial shows through that Ooh. way, and that was the famous Regal Benoit match. Yes. Um, I didn't know it at the time when I bought it. I thought, oh, this sounds interesting, Carl. And, yeah, I've still got that somewhere, but yeah, it was a good little, good ben, little wow. show it was. I'm really struggling what I would go for here, to be honest with you. Because um, we're kind of coming out, like Van Damme's theme's pretty good. Um, Try to think who it was. I mean, there's loads. Honestly, it's like there's so many, my brain can't pick them out uh, one by <laughs> one sort of thing. Um, well, why don't we let Phil, Phil or Cam go and you can have a think out. Thank you. Thank you. And that's good. So, uh, one of you two boys. Well, again, let's say I struggled as well. Um, so the only one I kind of written down, so I had to double check and make sure he was using it in the in the noughts. I think he started using it in the kind of mid two thousands. Um, again, it's one out a bit out of left field, um, but it's Shinsuke's Nakamura's and New Japan theme subconscious. Which is an absolute belter of a song. If you've ever played like a Japanese shoot 'em up, yeah. you'll like be dancing to it in about three seconds because it's, be- it's amazing. But <laughs> yes. I can't, I can't argue the point that it helped define the era, <laughs> and it was like really popular because, as I say, it was quite restricted. It really kind of, I think, became more well known when um, New Japan kind of kind of came up in like 2012, 13, 14 kind of time when they, when they, they kind of the, the, their network and that kind of thing started. But he was using it from about 2006 yeah. onwards, I think. So uh, that's my. But like, yeah. like I say, um, I wasn't really part of it. But like kind of, if you talk about wrestlers who kind of defined the 2000s, it's people like Batista or John Cena, and yeah. you'd probably say like Cena's music kind of is probably the most iconic of the era. I always preferred his first theme as well, but not his second theme. Yeah, yeah I, I'm really well, fan well, of that. Yeah. Like, that did 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 Kurt Angle's theme, I know it was just at the back of 99, but I thought it deserves a mention because that's another iconic theme, even though it was the yeah. Patriots theme. But I did think that's it. I never liked it when they put the You Suck trance in. I never liked that. To me, that really... Sp- I like that. I really spoiled the Kurt Angle character, I always felt. Made him a bit too goofy for my liking. You could argue he was a goofy character, but I, I don't know. <laughs> with his little well, this, this is Kurt Angle that in a few years' time is in the dressing room with Austin wearing a tiny cowboy hat playing a tiny <laughs> toy uh, guitar. Yeah, ukulele or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a wonderful scene. <laughs> Boston just wants to kill himself. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's me, like I say, because I wasn't really. It, it took a long time for me to come back and dress into this whole period. Like, say, it's only kind of really kind of like um, seeing the wrestlers, like, the, for that period kind of wrestling now is that the kind of music's kind of, I've kind of kept to it. But I've, very few I've kind of really probably connected with, so. We'll see if Cameron uh, can supply uh, a, a silver bullet to this to this section. Um, once again, I don't know if we mentioned it because I keep dropping in and out of this call. Uh, but uh, Triple H, Motorhead. Oh, that's a good point. That is a shout. I also play the WrestleMania 17 entrance where um, Lemmy forgets the words. Oh, 
ADN at that point, so I'm quite very surprised he was actually yeah, well, standing he's, up. He's there, you know. Lemmy, isn't it? That's how he does. That's how he rolls. You know, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, imagine forgetting all the lyrics. That's just that's a shout though, because like for what? the for the night, I, I I do have a soft spot for like the the what's it? It's my time. The one he had just before that. When he first became yeah. champ, and he oh, separated yeah. out from DX. That was I quite like that one. But yeah, the uh, the time to play the game. That's uh, that's a cracking theme. It is. See, we won about Triple H and you know how he how how his persona kind of affected the rest of the round him. But yeah, for entry music, he's he's got some good he's got some good ones. He's one of the few people that you know as time moved on, as his character developed, his music developed as mm. well. It's it's quite interesting to see that. Yeah, I keep forgetting uh, he had that other theme tune when he first broke away from DX, when he had the, you know, this on, do, yeah. do, 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 do. <laughs> And then, yeah. yeah, I remember that one, because he had that one sort of like Rumble yeah. 2000, didn't he? That the one first PPV yeah, back. Yeah, exactly, yes. And then um, he's, obviously the Motorhead stuff came a lot later, then time for sort of WrestleMania 17 the year later. Yeah. Um, what, the King Kings and like the Evolution theme and that sort of thing? Yeah, he had the yeah the evolution theme song all again done by Lemmy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's had loads, mostly done by Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they're the religion, but they're not really like. I think we say like we're going to exclude kind of songs from outside, but they were written for him, weren't they? They weren't kind of songs yeah, that they picked so. up. Yeah, I think it's he, was, yes. he was quite he was quite friendly with Lemmy, so. And, and you yeah. can freely you can freely listen to it on the network, so it's not too bad either. Yeah, yes, she can. Uh, <laughs> my my song is similar vein, I think it is because um, you're gonna tell me who sings it because I can't remember. But that would maybe go for Edge's theme. Metalingus. Yeah, all that's the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Awesome with, you know, yeah, Metalingus. Yeah, because no, no, no. yeah, I think that's a pretty cool. A I think one. that's a pretty cool song. Thing about the weird thing about uh, that song, though, right? And I heard it on Edge was on some interview on YouTube the other night. It might have been the bump or something like that. He was on. And I was watching it, and he reckons that he has grown into that theme song more now than it ever was when he used it previously. Because if you oh, listen to huh. if you listen to the lyrics. It does describe about how it's like someone making a comeback against all the odds. All right. And it's he reckons it's really, really weird how the songs kind of, you know, almost giving him indications of what was going to happen later on in his career. You know, he had to go away and now he's come back kind of idea. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, if you listen to like, the, the lyrics of Metalingus is, um, uh, you know, on, on this day, then it is really... Almost mm-hmm. kind of weirdly eerie. Yeah, uh, it's it's very. That's a definitely yeah, good one. Because again, yeah. that pop at the Rumble last year was, you know, when you get the on this day, uh, like, that, you were just like bloody hell. It is him. <laughs> yeah, Edge's return at the Rumble was kind of ruined for me because Kevin Dunn couldn't just stop changing cameras and they missed the fucking spear. <laughs> yeah, that's the bit yeah. crappy. How? And then they missed it again well, this year. I'm, I'm just going to quickly, uh, uh, irrelevant story, but I want to quickly do it. Jake Roberts uh, was in seven Royal Rumbles. Seven Royal Rumbles. And he would give the sign for the DDT, okay. and the fans would go mad. We never hit it. Never hit the move in the Royal Rumble. He would always get back dropped out the rope when he goes to go over it. Never did it. However, he came back in 96, had a few, a few little teasers, and then he got Savio Vega, and he hit the DDT, <laughs> and oh. the camera... Oh. Panda away. Is that the DDT? Yes. It's almost like it's a This is where we kind of end the race. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. Um, anyway, I'm going to have to wrap my book up a little bit quickly. Apologies, boys. But if we are going to okay. go into the, the modern era, um, again, there's uh-huh. more. But what's really strange is themes are relevant that shouldn't be relevant. We shouldn't be talking about the relevance of Goldberg's theme. 
in, in, the, you know, in the modern era, should we? But it's, it's got uh, one of those. Let's set up a goal for the better. There's, there's probably other guys in the ticket seems still around. Triple H seems still around. You know, there's there's uh, there's probably more. Big shows, for instance, you know, their themes actually yeah. not really relevant for wrestlers, yeah. maybe for comebacks, you know, uh, but not for people who are edges even. People are in in ring competition, yeah. but for me, I think without thinking about it too much, I would go for punk's music. I think he might did it, mm, did he have it one. in 2010? I wasn't sure if he got it. He did. Yes. So, hang on, do I qualify? Yes. No, I did qualify. Don't I? Just which about. one are we talking about? The the one he the most famous one, the cult of personality. Cult of personality. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was going to yeah. say it's either that yeah. or um, Avenge Sevenfold, Fire Burns. It was his other one. Oh, oh that, that was Kill Switch Engage. That was it. Yeah. Um, that that ah. for me, I think, I think, like a lot of fans, we just want to hear it one more time, you know, like in a, in a, in a big match mm. environment. We just want to, yeah, just want to hear it over the speakers. In the crowd, we're going mental when they're absolutely mental. If um, if like a Royal yeah. Rumble, I don't know, number thirty buzzed and that came on. And and for me, I think that's what makes it such a good theme because. We likely it is. We may never hear it again, but everyone wants to hear it again. Mm-hmm. If yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So I think to me that's what um, makes it a really good thing. Didn't like Paul Heyman get it? Don't did. play it. Yeah, it was in Chicago. It was. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was in Chicago, and it was literally like I, I remember uh, that day. It was literally like four months after he left. So I, yeah. I thought it was like years and years and years later. It was not. <laughs> It was four months. It was four it months. Similar... So it was. It was all still very fresh. It wouldn't yeah. be before the podcast then, wouldn't it? Uh, well, what did he left in 2014? Because he did it at the end of the year, I think. Like yeah, November time. He did, yeah, yeah, when he did the art of wrestling. Yeah, and then him and Colt Cabana promptly sued each other. Yeah. <laughs> Any um, <laughs> a few. I do do a few honourable mentions. Um, I like Christian's current theme. Well, whenever he got it, the the. Waterproof is it waterproof, waterproof blonde? blonde? Yeah. There's two versions of it, isn't there? There's, yeah. It's a no. Hang on. Does, did waterproof blonde originally do it, and then there's somebody else does it now? Am I getting confused? Might be. Yeah. I think so. Um, but I like both versions of it, and I like Bobby Roode's. I think uh, theme deserves a little mention because <laughs> because it's because oh, it is glorious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we will be coming back to that one. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> but I'm I'm, apo- I'm I'm just trying to think of honourable mentions for me worst ones just before I go. But to be fair, I, I think um, they might have hit the uh, nail on the head by mentioning Men on the Mission previously. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, oh, I think so. But you have a good uh, finish it off, lads, and I will speak to you all very soon. Well, all right, Ta-da. take care. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good Bye. sleep. Uh, the question is, how do I end this? <laughs> 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 I don't like this new technology. Or just like the call, or just everything in general. Just, just... The only option it gives me is join voice. It doesn't say X or not. It's like a little disconnect thing at the end. Are you on the? I don't know about the app. <laughs> yeah, there should be a hang up button or a disconnect button hang or on, something, or just turn your phone on and off and on. Hang on, hang on. I have, I have... Just shut down the Discord app. Just close the app. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. So, sorry, guys. This is. Hang on. If I take me, hang on. Uh, oh. I can disconnect him. I think I can. I can kick you. Oh, can you kick me? Oh yeah, me you, you can kick him. Yeah. Just kick me out. With great pleasure, I'm going to disconnect Alan. What a day! Bye, Al. Bye, bye. Oh, he's, right. he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. That was much longer than half an hour. Did we pick a best for the 2000s then? I don't think we got that far. You know what? I'm just going to say John Cena. Yeah, it's a good one. Not necessarily the best, but I think it defines that kind of period of of, uh, of the wrestling yeah. because, you know, he was on top for the kind of majority of it. And yeah, like I can't think of anything I say. There's um, like, who was it? Um, Xavier Woods had that big video when he was dancing to Batista team WrestleMania and that sort of thing. But oh, maybe God. it's because I haven't got the kind of connection to that era. It's like, it's good. But I much prefer was it Legend Christian did the um uh, the little Dave Batista lyrics to it. That was much better. Yes. We're so sorry, little Dave Batista. <laughs> I knew it. We must leave you I knew it. Oh man, you guys. Leave? I'm so scared. <laughs> on my own. Irregardless, little Dave Batista. We still must oh, leave you with this foster family.
I'm so scared <laughs> by myself. <laughs> Duly noted, Liberty um. Star, we still have to leave you with this family. <laughs> it's never going to go away. Oh, my God, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that might be uh. the finest thing I've ever been involved with in my entire wrestling career was part of the creation uh, of the Ooh. theme music for Little Dave Batista. 2010s. So, this is when I kind of came back interested, and I think Alan kind of stole my thunder by mentioning the CM Punk theme. kind of people that got me back in and that is like the kind of static at the beginning ah oh, it's a belt of a theme tune and the way they kind of again the lyrics reflect the rest there even though technically it's an outside song so we shouldn't really yeah, have it it's borrowed yes yeah yep. but this again it's weird how like it fits his character and also it's weird that Vince paid the money for to, to license it for as long as he did yeah they're still licensing that one on the network I think it still plays it I'll have to go back and double check but do, yeah, yeah I don't think it was there I think I think Vince probably paid the whatever it is the same thing Tony Khan did to keep the the one for the Cody Lee video perpetu- 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 perpetuity perpetual perpetuity yeah. perpetuity yeah so I was kind of going through like kind of one side um, like I just kind of wrote down like what ones I liked so I kind of wrote down I initially wrote down Bray Wyatt's theme the kind of initial slow one but then I was okay. I was having a chat through with Ethan about this and we decided that like it was the atmosphere of the entrance that made it a great song rather than the song itself. Yeah. Yeah, because like, it's like doom doom doom. Yeah. Doom, 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 doom. Is it's like from that kind of um, is it CFOS period when they kinda of took over Jim Johnson got hoofed out and then they kinda of took over the lyrics, which is where you kinda of get to your boy Bobby Roode and Glorious. I would argue though that this has yes. given us one of the a period of time where sometimes the music is more over than the actual wrestlers. Yeah, which I think is what happened with Correct. Bobby Roode. I think Bobby Roode is the biggest is, victim yes. of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because here he is, like as, he, as a heel character, with this theme tune that everybody loves and wants to sing. It was kind of completely yep. his, his heel his heel run up of the bees, which I think that was, and he was kind of flipped to a face. Like exactly when he shouldn't be. I think that kind of like derailed him a fair bit. You say, you say cut him in half, but Chris Jericho's just about to do that right now <laughs> in AEW. Well, flip over. He's been a heel since he yeah. heel since he came well, in. I did write the fans sing. I Judas. did write down. I did put Judas as one of my things because like that is a belter of a song. Oh, oh yeah, yeah it's great. and is it probably is Judas probably the greatest example of a wrestler singing their own theme tune? 
<laughs> yeah, I would just say to so. return to that, yeah, of course. By the fact it's like but an actual, uh, so. I'm going to say it's a proper song, but you know what I mean? He's not singing it, Yeah, no, he's not no, singing no. his own theme tune to be a heel and be a cock. He's singing it because he's genuinely oh. got his own oh. rock band. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But again, like it's, just... um, it's like the audience singing that part of the reason why you, you, know, you want to turn the inner circle face, because... Like the crowd singing the theme tune isn't necessarily unless it's Sammy Guevara singing it really badly. It always kind of bugs me <laughs> the way that people sang yeah. the theme tune, and it was like they reveled in it. And it's like he's supposed to be a heel. People should be drowning in the yeah. booze. Yeah. Oh, well, the thing is, Jericho never acknowledged them. That that's the beauty of it. He just sort of let he it happen. Like, like, right, crazy this is all, thing this toward is the end of it. <laughs> Well, I think because he knew that he was turning, so you know, he just thought so yeah. the theory of fuck it. But I will, on a, on a total side note, did, we, did everyone watch Dynamite last uh, week? I watched the uh, the ending. Yeah, the, how great was that angle yeah, at the brilliant. end? It was done so well. MJF, MJF is fucking brilliant. He is. Yeah, he's a cracking heel. Like the way he did the way, the way, the way he did like kind of like oh, I'm not been trying to break up the inner circle. I've been making my own. The way yep. he just kind of switched it at that point was just fantastic. Yeah. It was beautiful. And then boshing Hager right into the bottle of wine and all sorts. That was, yeah, it was cracking. <laughs> so, a bit mental. Poof, off we go, sort of thing. Yeah, so I also wrote down the um, the original Shield music. Sierra Hotel. India. Echo. Lima. Delta. Shield. Which Ooh. obviously became Roman Reigns. So it's kind of get it's weird. It kind of gets tainted by Roman Reigns, but now it's called again because he's the tribal chief yeah. and he's wicked. That initial kind of you know the uh, the, the was it the uh, Sierra Hotel Indigo Echo Lima Delta thing when they kind of came down through the crowd. Yeah, yeah, that was a great vibe. And yeah, so that was um, until fairly recently though. That was kind of the millstone around Roman Reigns' neck because I maintain that the reason that Roman Reigns got booed for as long as he did when they were trying to push him as a, like, a big baby face was the fact that he was the only member mm-hmm. of the shield that never changed when they when the shield broke up. Yeah, he kept the uniform and all sorts, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he kept the uniform, he kept yeah. the music, he didn't change anything about his appearance or his moves. Now even even now, something as simple as he wrestles bare chested. Great, that's fine. And that's the like it separates it separates the character, isn't it? Yeah, if he'd have done that three years ago, we might have been on a winner. <laughs> I'm guessing the thinking was there was such a cachet in the shield at that time that it will just like if he keeps those things like that cachet from the shield will roll over onto Roman Reigns. Yeah, with it pretty much had the opposite effect, didn't it? It kind of made people yeah, go away from him <laughs> because at least like Seth yeah. and Dean were like doing something a bit different with their characters. Yeah, but he's like, no, you're still pretending to be the cool thing that we liked, but you weren't the cool person that we like in it. So no, thank yeah. you. He was the least cool member of the shield. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. was. He he had no charisma at all. He was just there. Yeah, and it's taken a while to learn it. You know, some new teeth and look at him. Well, it's, it's amazing what Paul Heyman does for you. Because <laughs> I, I maintain if Paul Heyman did not get excited with him, Roman Reigns would not be at the level he's at right now. No, definitely not. And I mean, yeah. I think we'd be, th- there was a risk, obviously, you know, it could be we're getting away from the topic of music here in a sort of modern day wrestling. But I think there's like a, a risk that when Paul Heyman went with Roman Reigns, it would have been seen as, oh, it's just because they can't get Lesnar back. They have to give him someone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what makes it work is the fact that Heyman is a completely different Paul Heyman, Roman Reigns, than he was with Brock Lesnar. With Brock Lesnar, he was the mouthpiece. He was the guy who was in charge. Yep. And Lesnar was just the destroyer that he carried around with him all the, play, all the time. Whereas with Roman Reigns, it's very much Roman Reigns is obviously the head of the table and Heyman is just there to facilitate his needs. Yeah, yeah. he's just to like sign the paperwork and collect the money. Yeah, I agree with that. What about, um, but we didn't mention Brock Lesnar's theme. Yeah, it's a good one because again, it's got the opening. Then it's just dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, dun. like because when he came back in, was it 2012 when he came back? Yeah, something like that. When he came back in, 
smeared Cena across the ring or whatever he did. That was a good moment. Oh, and again, like that kind of powerful music. That was a wonder. I was at the Raw SmackDown Super Show and Cena was like, talking about a variety of things. I think this was the, I think it was a Raw after WrestleMania or something like that. Anyway, yeah. And the, I remember that I will never forget the pop of the crowd when Lesnar's theme hit because everyone knew that Cena was about to get his head just <laughs> impaled and something. Gonna, and lo and behold, that happened. He's just going to get it twisted off his shoulders. That was nine years ago. Oh, stop it. I know. Stop it. So I think I probably agree with that. I'll, I'll probably land on CM Punk at the end of this. But what, what do you think? one of you two so for me again it's going to show my biases 2010 was the decade that I fell head over heels with Japanese wrestling and in particular New Japan and there was one particular person that when I say his name I think you two are going to agree and that is TakeOver the theme song of one Katsuro Shibata Shibata. Because you just had that, you just had that little like, did it, did it, did it, just kicks in. Literally, in the case of Shibata, because you knew <laughs> the minute you heard that little calm before the storm, you just knew that somebody was about to get their neck, like, you know, just imploded. <laughs> Some very kind of <laughs> final stenosis was about to happen in the ring. Yes, exactly. Somebody was about to get kicked very, very hard <laughs> on a few occasions, and for me, it just it just summed up Shibata because it was the man's like calm on the the outside, but inside the man is an absolute maniac. And only when you really, really, really piss him off do you get that anger coming out and the violence that ensued. And it is, it is such a shame as Phil alluded to that he cannot be in the ring because well, he kind of had that one match where. He, basically broke his brain essentially yeah he had bad himself out of a career didn't he essentially uh, it's a dumb spot but in hindsight you know it's amazing what that can be but for me that theme is definitely one that sticks with me and every time I hear it I mean I'll never forget when he came out to confront Kenta at the G1 a couple of years ago oh yeah it was, yeah, yeah, it, it was that one ago was it yeah yeah, and he did, he did the running drop kick into the corner and just absolutely murdered Kenta. <laughs> it was, it was. I was, I was yelling at the TV because I was so happy, and the crowd were going ballistic as well because they hadn't seen him in the ring doing anything physical for a couple of years, and all of a sudden he's just beating the shit out of Kenta. Yeah, happy days. It was a happy days. Yes. <laughs> so Cameron, I think he might come under like theme songs getting more over than wrestlers or I don't know if it does or it doesn't but um, Rising Sun Shinsuke Nakamura Oh, it's a good one. Good Before one, yeah. the lyrics were added. Yeah, no, don't give me the lyrics for him. That ver- when he did the whole thing with AJ Styles oh, and WrestleMania. No, not that. Just, no, 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 no. But yeah, when he came out with um, against Sami Zayn at that takeover. Oh, yeah, the takeover Dallas. Oh, yes, oh, that was, was like just, you know, and it, yeah, oh, all oh, the crowd was oh, oh, happy times. Probably mention that your old NXT went through a, a pretty good run of some cracking themes. There's like you know Finn Balor's um, yep. a- uh, Askers. Yep, mm-hmm. Askers is brilliant. And push the future. That's a cracking one. Um, and then I think they fell out, didn't they? So I think they're kind of re- slowly replacing all their songs because they're no longer part of the WWE or something now, I think. Are they not? Something like that. Yeah, they, there's some kind of falling out. So I think they've been slowly replacing their, their themes. Oh, okay. Like, I don't think Bobby Roode uses Glorious anymore, does he? I don't know. Well, he's teaming with um, Dolph Ziggler mostly. So I'd imagine they just use Dolph's yeah. music. So, so it, it, it wouldn't be glorious then it'd be mad card <laughs> I won't leave here I won't leave here <laughs> I would check in we, we, talk, we talked a little bit about you know the, the worst theme tunes I chucked Dolph Ziggler's in there oh, that's pretty bad this in the world of yeah. no it's it's awfully generic although do you see oh 
can't remember what it was on. They were someone was trying to find like who is the most generic wrestler that ended up being. I think um ah oh, was it Ted DiBiase Jr. Whatever he's called. Oh, not him. Not Ted DiBiase Jr. I have to find the article and then um, uh, audit it. But it was like that's, yeah, there's... that that's harsh. Leave the boy alone. But like there was actually there's like actual stats behind it about wind loss ratios and all sorts, and he came out like exactly fifty percent. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Um, we, um, I also kind of was thinking of um, the new day, and then I realised, like again with like the road dog thing from earlier, like it, it's the beginning bit with Biggie shouting about yeah, what's yeah. going on. That's the bit you like. Yeah, because the, the actual music, music is just boom. Yeah, because it's boom, 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 or something like that, isn't it? It's just bass. Yeah, yeah. It's that yeah, kind it's of yeah, It's the um, oh, feel the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's stuff, also you know, a new day match. Like gonna go oh, Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever they are, yeah. It's just like, you know, yeah. Yeah. whatever location they're in at the time. Yeah, was it Clap yeah, for your world exactly famous so... tag team champions, that one? <laughs> oh, camp's yep, off now, he's gone. He's gone, you're first Cameron. But <laughs> it's, it's a new camp. <laughs> what, about, what about right now? What, what's everyone digging at the moment? Oh. Uh, entrance team wise. Because I've got one that I really like. I don't think so, because I'm mainly watching AEW these days. And like you know, Moxie's is quite good. I quite like yep. um. No, no, it's the whole thing. Like the revival's old theme. I used to like that one in the WWE. The kind of say yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That was getting back in the NXT days. Yeah, back yeah, again, yeah, back in the NXT themes. The one for me that sticks out at the moment is Lance Archer's. Because I think it hits the, the perfect balance of that's that's his character. His character, the more AEW is, I'm going to kill everything in front of me. And as, as long as everyone dies. No, that's true. Oh, what's that? What was that backstage promo where you kind of walked in the change room and just killed like five jobbers sat in the locker room? <laughs> yes. And so he, did, like, he literally just threw one in the bin and walked out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was wonderful and yeah. now he's going to murder Sting yeah. that's going to be great fun to watch <laughs> yeah bite's fine <laughs> although I will say the fact that Sting took that powerball from Brian Cage that looked rough as hell yes because as, we, as we've discussed Brian Cage is a beefy boy yes he, he really really is yeah. like there was that was it with um, he was with Darby Allen. he got Darby Allen up in the suplex walked up the ring oh, steps God. and just threw him into the ring yes. <laughs> he's like alright yes. Brian we know you got muscles just calm it down man <laughs> Oh, I, I, that, was, that was wonderful. Yeah, but yeah, like I don't think there's anybody like who's got like a theme that kind of really kind of jumps out as like again as what's something that's got kind of like super memorable or you know I, iconic for the time that sort of thing. It's yeah, I kind of kind of I keep falling back onto CM Punk. Yeah, sometimes you get sense. a lot of like you can tell when the WWE like fall in love with like one particular artist and they just get them to do yes. like everything mm. and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I think at the minute with NXT, it's like Poppy. They seem to be obsessed with. And I have no See, idea who the hell uh, she is. This is I don't know why. No, it's just whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and me, and, me and NXT right now are not, not in a happy relationship because the last few weeks of shows have been very underwhelming, to say the least. Um, I tend to catch NXT sort of every once in a while. and I don't watch it as like every single week. If, if Johnny Gargano in the way can go away and never ever ever come back that would make me very happy oh not a fan of the way no I hate the way it's so dumb what as in I just don't like the whole gimmick I don't like the f- I mean it's played out I think the fact that they just kept it going and going then they had that stupid fucking kidnapping angle that never got paid off with Dexter oh, Lewis who's yeah, yeah, yeah. bizarrely yeah. playing the exact same character he was playing in TNA 10 years ago which is all right. I know, I know. It's just, it, it, it's fine. It's just, there's, I mean, there's just not a lot. And then, of course, you know, I'm way off the track now. <laughs> I'm just having a rant. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, so we, we couldn't win the women's titles. So we're going to make our own women's titles. And the, the first champions are going to lose them in about, uh, oh, I don't know, 40 minutes. Yeah, there you go. It's like, what the hell is that about? Doesn't make any sense. That, that, you mentioned that, Gargano kind of reminded me that probably best entrances in the last few years was Tommaso Ciampa's heel entrance with no music, ironically enough.
Oh yeah, that was it, wasn't it? They just kind of rain down booze just on him. And just booze. <laughs> Just walking out very slowly as the entire crowd swore at him for about three minutes. Just walking very slowly <laughs> to the ring, not making eye contact with anybody because he's better than everybody else in the arena sort of thing. Like that was... He doesn't need their gratification, he's there for himself. It's so just a shame why would he, he was then going to have a match which would last four and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember I what you're talking about. Bloody hated the Gargano <laughs> Champa bloody main events they had. They were. I I hated the entire few. I liked if the they promos, had one but match I hated that the matches. Twenty minutes long, then that would have been brilliant. But they had three matches, all of which were like forty-five minutes long. It's like no, <laughs> yeah, the archetype is no on right less. Now. Less is definitely more in this case. Brevity is the soul of wit. Yep, just stop it. Do you ever get that funny? Mm-hmm. Do you have that funny thing now where you look at Tommaso Ciampa and then think, I am older than he is? I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> oh, God. How old Tommaso is Tommaso Ciampa? Like 38. Oh, Jesus, I'm like getting that. closer. As, yeah. as the 40 year old of the room. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, hey. Wait, hang on a minute. Tommaso Ciampa is not. He is going to be the same age as me this year. He'll be 36 in May 8th. Then you got 36. That's even worse. <laughs> not any better. <laughs> There you go. He, me and Champa, best pals forever. Me and Phil in the 40 plus bracket here. Yeah, we moved up to the next tick box, haven't we? <laughs> yes, we have on the census. Yeah. Bastards. Fucking. I know. Young <laughs> <laughs> people can fuck off. Anyway, that's, that's, we wow. need to win the expiry tag for the, the, not the expiry, the explicit tag for the month. So there you go. <laughs> expiry <laughs> tag <laughs> wow yeah there's a little Freudian slip for you so who we kind of landed on for the 10s then who's who kind of like who are we picking for the 10s to be the uh... I don't know it, it's hard I don't know um I don't know I don't I don't think it's right to pick a one a, a, a B.O. end all hmm. songs I don't think there is one I think there's songs that work in the situation yeah. given who it is or whatever I don't think it's something you can arbitrarily say this is the best one because it depends on who it is, the situation they're in, what storylines are involved in, how bothered the creative are with them. There's a lot that goes into it. It's not just as simple as picking a song. Okay, then. <laughs> there we go. I, I I slam my penis down as a gavel to say we're done. So all the music in the tins is rubbish. And then the... <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I just said that... I think it... I think it kind of speaks to how the era's gone, as in, like, no one person's been able to kind of dominate or kind of define <laughs> that era because they haven't, yeah. the company hasn't necessarily it's, let anybody define an era because it's about the company no, more than the rest of the It's become very homogenous and safe. Well, I read something recently that WWE now consider themselves a content company and that just <laughs> rubbed me the wrong way altogether. They need to provide more content. It's like yeah, we're exactly we're we're off to Peacock where like they're gonna have that that whole launch is gonna be a yeah, mess we'll when that goes, goes live. But yeah, I think because of the way the WWE, WWE kind of turned, kind of like the first half of the tens, like the, again they kind of dominated everything. Like, but they it was all about the the WWE universe, not necessarily a wrestler who could kind of stand above it all and kind of define everything. So, I think it's hard to yeah. take like a defining was, song because yeah, there wasn't necessarily a defining person at that time. No, uh, if we're talking about things that we would like to get rid of from the 2010s, if we can get rid of the term WWE Network and Michael Cole, I'd be <laughs> oh, a lot WWE happier. Universe. I would get rid of that. That's just a personal opinion. Yeah, get rid of Universe because it's just like yeah, what's just the fire point it into that? Yeah. There's a podcast I listen to who ironically calls their fans the Solar System, <laughs> and it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's quite smart. But uh, so yeah, that was our little tour of entrance themes throughout the, the decades. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was good. That was good, but the real question is, who's driving the bus next month and where uh, are they taking us? The, the Conquista bus. I think it's Cameron. I know I'm after him, I think. I was just about to ask who's driving the bus. The, the Conquista bus. you, Cameron. You've got me doing that again. This is your own fault. Don't bring the Venga boys into this. They're not arresting the you. The Venga bus is coming and what? it will have its vengeance. It should have not gained sentience. 
Oh, wow. I have to find it. <laughs> I don't know what that was about. I think a bus is coming, <laughs> and if he wanted, right? You the, find that, I'll find it. Just, just the next show. Oh, Where's I'm trying to find the fact they're not coming. There we go. I'm coming. There we go. I'm coming. Episode forty-one is being helmed uh-huh. by one person called Cameron. Oh, is it me? Oh, oh Christ. It is you. Um, oh, this is for, this is for Cameron goes um, to, to we choice. Flip on, we flip round on the on the uh, the alphabetical order, so we're on to the next. Okay, bit. cool. Yep. Uh, how old does a pay per view have to be to be considered retro for the Conquistadors? Well, if it's Al, it's about forty okay. years, but that's he's All not right, here, okay. so that's fine. Um, I don't. I think. I think uh, probably for me, like maybe like five so more years. Than five. Oh, that's interesting. Um, oh, hello. I don't know. That's what you're going for. If you're picking Super Showdown, no, I'm never doing no, the no, show I'm again. Anything like that. No way. <laughs> um, what you. have we got to do? Hmm. I'm just trying to think now. Um, Please do. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go? I think he just cut out. This is you saying it. Shall we go back to the early nineties? Or should we go back to the early 2000s? Oh. Well, it depends. Are, you, are we doing WWE, WCW? Where are we going? What the last few decades we've done, that's, 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 let's approach it scientifically. Okay, let's approach it scientifically. All right. Okay. Oh God. Strap in, folk. So the last block of episodes is, what was like 1990, mm-hmm. WrestleMania 7, uh, TNA first pay view, then 1988, and then NXT Brooklyn. we all over the place. So... Yeah, broadly, I think mm. the, uh, the majority was like early nineties slash late eighties, with a couple of like an early two thousands and a two thousand ten one in there. So mm, we haven't really done anything kind of consistent. So I've not helped at all with my scientific uh, assistance, I'm afraid. No, oh, it's kind of all over the place. Um, yeah. Okay, good job. Bill. I'm flipping in between. If we want to go early nineties, I'd like to do SummerSlam ninety two. Okay. If we want to go a little bit more recent than that, I know I said early 2000s, it's not that early. Um, with the mention of CM Punk tonight, Money in the Bank 2011. Oh, please. Oh. please. I, want to, I want to watch that match again. I want to watch that entrance again. Yeah, I've never actually seen that. Have you not oh seen that? Oh my God, Phil. You want to do that one? Wow. Money in the Bank? Oh my. Yeah. Right, Money yes. in the Bank 2011 then. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you know what we, what we forgot about as well? Uh, what's that? What? We had um, a reply to our Twitter uh, about the oh, it is. actual person responded outside of the, uh, <laughs> the golden, you know, the golden members. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Who shall now <laughs> as the gold members? <laughs> the gold members. The golden members. Golden share members. <laughs> golden members is a copyright. Gold member might get us caught up in the uh, Austin Powers or something. So. Like, Golden members so, is legally separate and, and said, uh, defined separately from the other thing. So um, Ryan Daly on Twitter responded to you, Cameron. Uh, at RPDaily81 uh, responded with his favourite music of the various periods. Uh, so the 1980s, he picked uh, The Ultimate Warrior. Fair enough. Good choice. Uh, Bret Hart for the 1990s. I assume the early one, the better one, not the Jim yep. Johnson rubbish one. Um, <laughs> for the 2000s, he put Mark Henry's Hall of Pain period. That's a good one. I didn't actually think about. Yeah. And current is your boy Bobby Roode. That's fair. Yeah. So that was our, a bit of feedback we had on the uh, on our on the, the from the from the well from the fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's more than we normally get. Well, we normally <laughs> so. get. So thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you for your uh, suggestion, yes. sir. Mark Henry is really because like. Everybody kind of has talks about that hit him in that period quite fondly, don't they? That kind of Hall of Pain, badass Mark Henry period. It's uh, I can't wait for you to watch the show, Phil. You're gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. So this is, this is, this is, I know about it. I know the finish. You know, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> well, that's no, debatable. Um, yeah, debatable. But, but I think the, see it in it's, context it's, of the rest of the show is going to be quite interesting. Oh, it's a wonderful because this is this is the final night of Punk's current contract. They've been building up for two weeks. There's a fantastic video at the start of it, and you know it, it culminates in probably one of the the best moments WWE have had for a long time. Yeah, it's certainly one of the best storylines. <sighs> I think it's one of those things that though the storyline did get a little bit wasted after the show, but we'll probably discuss that. 
on the next recording. Yes. Yeah, we'll discuss that. But, uh, it's it's going to be a good time. <laughs> going to be a good time. Yeah, that's that's a pay per view one, is it not? <laughs> nice. What was that good? Just looking at the card. Um, I mean, there are some questionable matches on it, but you it's know. WWE in 2011. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm mean, looking at the old rainbows, is it? Well, I mean, Kelly Kelly against Brie Bella, that should tell you a lot of things uh, about it. That'll be an interesting one. Yep. As, as will be everyone's favourite idiot, Alberto Del Rio. Oh, God. Oh, of course, because he just won the Rumble. He I did. Hear. Oh, my God. He did. We're going to be able to talk about that wife-beating, drunk... Arsehole. I'll just run away to pitch. I'll just run away to Mexico and still get arrested because I'm an idiot. Is that when he still had this, the, the fella doing the intros for him? I can't remember his name now. Yes. Uh, what was his um, name? What was, it? what was his name? Was somebody Rodriguez? Ricardo? Ricardo, yeah, it was Ricardo. Yeah. Ricardo Rodriguez, yep, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, those two, like, uh, they, I quite liked him. I, I mean, se- separate the man from, you know, the, his douchebaggery, but, the, you know, the wrestling was quite good for that kind of period, even though he kind of, <laughs> like, he never quite fulfilled his potential in the company but I guess we'll discuss that when we get to it next we'll discuss that. There's, there's, there's also a hilarious finish in the semi-main event but like I say we'll discuss that when we get there yeah so if you have any thoughts of that like Ryan uh, feel free to yes. reply to us on the old Twitter yep at the Conquistadors yeah. please uh and by the time we get tell. to next the ne- uh, next time we might have even uh, opened up this discord for people oh imagine mm. I know. Imagine I've... the dirty and washed people. <laughs> only vaccinated. Only. I can. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we might have opened up our Discord for other people to kind of come in and have a chat to us as well. I'm talking about maybe, you know, watching some pay views together and that sort of thing. But, you know, we'll get to yeah. that when we get yeah, to we'll it. We'll get to that when we get to it. It's on the planning, yes. on the planning stages. Yeah, it is. And uh, before we go, I would just I would just like to say the following. I paid for AEW Revolution. Was I disappointed with the explosion? Of course I was. Did I enjoy the rest of the show? Yes. Does one bad explosion ruin an entire pay-per-view? No. That is all. Cool. Uh, thank you for that summary, Ewan. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So I, uh, <laughs> I put the bang in at the end as like the end of the podcast? Sure. Put, no, put the DDP bang in. <laughs> well, my favorite thing about that was um, was it someone tweeted a gift fit and they were like, "Oh, um, Eddie Kingston deserved a better death." <laughs> <laughs> he really did. Because <laughs> really he he sold up like a champion, and it like yeah, he did. Oh. It didn't deserve to be sold as well as he I did, did it. But I you did know, see someone a... say that the one thing they could have done to repair the entire thing and save it at the last minute, and it would have required some immense oh. levels of off the cuff thinking in the final dying seconds of a pay-per-view, <laughs> if Kenny Omega could appear at the top of the ramp and just piss himself laughing at both uh, Omega and uh, both uh, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley in the middle of the ring, try to, like, you know, cower over each other, yeah. then that would have been, that would have solved uh, the whole thing. They did fix it on with the Wednesday, they did fix it the Wednesday after yeah. with the whole... Uh, that for promo one, for I like, again. I like, oh. I like I like the fact that they basically just ripped an impact because they apparently paid for the bomb. Yep. It's like, oh, don't rip an impact. You did nothing wrong. You know, he thinks he's the Joker and he thinks that you're Batman. <laughs> yeah, oh, Eddie Kicks is <laughs> fucking he's mad. Amazing. He's so good. Yeah. I'm um, so I, happy he's got work. I found that tweet. Uh, the actual lyrics are, the Venger bus is coming and everybody's running. The bus will have its vengeance. It should not have gained sentience. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <sighs> I can hear the music playing in the background, oh so I think I've got And that's what my that's what me and me, me and Ethan sing whenever the Venger bus music comes on. The Venger bus is coming and everybody's running. This bus will have its vengeance, it should not have King's engines. Right. Okay. So this is all edited out. Mostly, mostly. I've got to keep it in for fun. Why not? Um, <laughs>